But before we get into all the good music tonight, and I know that we're going to have a good time in worship and fellowship tonight, let's just go to the Lord in prayer at this time, shall we? Dear Lord, as we come before you this evening, dear Lord, we know that there are many ways to worship you. We worship you with our lives and with our hearts. But dear Lord, just pray that this music, that it will be glorifying to you. And I just pray that it will uplift us and carry us on, helping us to have a good start to our week. Dear Lord, we just want to give you our lives and just follow Jesus every day this week. And we ask all these things in Christ's name now. Amen. Amen. I'm going to turn it over to the Sylvie family. They will introduce themselves here. I can tell you a lot of things about Mark here, but I won't. Uh, <laughs> turn it over to them. Okay? Looking forward to it, guys. storms and we have storms and 
Jesus taught his disciples about how to deal with storms. And uh, Jesus is that rock that will lead us through any storms. And I'm going to share a little more about that here later in the, in the program. But uh, that is such an important message we want to share tonight is that how much we need Jesus to carry us through our days and our future and uh, all we have before us. All right, so uh, let me introduce before we go. We're, we're gonna, some of us are gonna go down and some are gonna sing and we'll come back up and uh, we'll do our exercise tonight. Uh, let me just introduce quick, uh, we're the Sylvie family. I'm Mark Sylvie, uh, we live there at Call. We're in the process of, we bought a house at Hope. We're gonna be moving there this summer. Lord willing, we're going to move. It's been two years in the, in the efforts here. Um, my wife is Dana. We've been married 33 years. And uh, we have seven children that we've been blessed with. Uh, six are here tonight. Our oldest is married and lives in southwest uh, Missouri as a firefighter. Uh, and we, he really started this on our music journey. He learned all kinds of instruments and did really good. He moved off, got married, moved off. <laughs> and the others really stepped up. They really stepped up with all their music. Uh, next would be Amanda. She's our oldest daughter. And she plays the mandolin and the vocals. You, you heard her already. She does a great job. Uh, I'm trying to think of age order. And I'm going to get messed up. And, uh, Jared. <laughs> See, now... Don't, don't be so hard on me. Every year, their numbers change. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I get it all down, it changes. Uh, so, uh, Jared's next. I won't tell you the ages. You can ask them after if you want to. Um, Jared's next. He plays the bass. He's, uh, <clears throat> you'll hear him in a little bit. Uh, then, John. John's <laughs> next. And uh, uh, plays our guitar. Plays guitar and does our lead. And then, uh, Sarah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Your little brother, Jacob, uh, is next, <clears throat> and he plays a he plays a banjo for us and some songs. And he forgot the banjo. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe on purpose. Uh, we got off without it. We're we're back and forth between two homes right now, and uh, that got left. Um, it's Sarah. Sarah's next. And the second oldest daughter, and she'll be singing for us here in a little bit. And then Grace is our baby. Grace is the baby. The smallest of all the girls, and she's the baby. Um, and she, she will, she is just, uh, well, she plays the violin, does so many things, sings, but uh, she's going to get on this keyboard here a little bit, and uh, she's just a blessing for us. She's, God gave her a gift to do some things with her fingers, and not a lot of people can do, and uh, we enjoy hearing her play. All right, that's everybody, right? Yeah. All right, then. we're going to go down, and they're going to sing a few, and then I'll be back. <laughs> Let me tell you about Jesus and what he's done for me.
God's done many wonderful works in the earth, and um, he's made three things. He's made the family, the church, and the government, and, and God carries out his works through those, those areas. All of them are his creation, and he has good plans for each one of them. So important, and I believe that a lot of the problems we have in our country are from the breakdown of the family. Right. Satan, I think, attacks that because he knows how strategic. It's foundational. And you do you strike the foundation, as the psalm says, if the foundation is destroyed, what sort of righteous do? And the devil knows that. You, know, you want to destroy a building, you, you hit it at its foundation, and everything else gets affected. And, uh, and so our families are so important. And uh, we came across this song. It's actually in one of our Adventist hymn books that we use, that we like to use. And we've never heard it. And it's this great gem right there in this book. And we're going to sing it for you. <clears throat> Such important truth. God give us Christian homes. Amen.
I just want to say a word of testimony and what God's in my own heart, my own life as a father. About 20 years ago or so, uh, God used some other men to speak a word into my life, some teaching that uh, radically altered the course I was going on that called me to be doing, to step up and do what I should be doing at home as a father. And this was one of, well, one of the parts of the song is that the challenge of, the, of these men's teaching was worship God in your home. We worship in our hearts individually. We worship at church, hopefully. We worship, that's why we gather to worship. But when we go home, we need to worship them too. And it made a tremendous difference in our lives. That and usually at night, we would gather and we would sing a song, <clears throat> sing a hymn, and then I would read scripture, talk about it, and then we would pray. And uh, I can tell you the times when just having a bad day, just out of sorts. And then when we did that, uh, it, it just made a difference. Bringing God into our home, in our lives. And I can tell you, that, I mean, uh, God tells us to be doing that. Uh, Deuteronomy 6 says, even it says four times a day, it says when you rise up, when you lie down, when you walk by the way, when you sit in your house. Uh, and uh, we've been seeking to do that. Since then, God had hit me on the head to do it, honestly. Um, but we began to do it, and and at first, kids would sit there and just stare at us when we were singing the hymn, and uh, and then slowly, you know, saying, "Now, <laughs> that's how they got to do what they do now." Oh. Is us singing in the home. So that's my testimony, and to say then, I encourage you, grandfather, hey, grandfather here, fathers. <clears throat> Have a time of worship when your family is gathered. It will make a tremendous difference. Especially your grandfathers. And God says that in Deuteronomy 2. He says, you fathers and your grandfathers. Teach your children and your grandchildren. And I can tell you, one of the most vivid memories I have is one grandfather we went to visit a time before we left. He said, everybody get around. Let's pray. I want to pray for you. I remember that to this day. My grandfather said, man, we can have an impact and we need to start having all the impact we can because Satan is taking our children. Satan is trying to corrupt our children and steal them away. And we need to fight back. And this is how fathers and grandfathers in the home. And it's a powerful force. Yeah. Our next song is on, we have the church and we have the government. And this song is about God's triumph. God's made the government. We need good governments, and God has a, a purpose for that. And uh, with this battle we're in, uh, this song says God's word will stand. God's going to win the victory. There's going to be a lot of, a lot of uh, opposition, but God's going to triumph in the end. And we can be confident, and we can be uh, bold in what we do. God's word will stand. <laughs> Children that were animals speak against. 
what Psalm 33 says. It says, uh, the plans of the nations will come to no effect. And, and uh, but God's plan is going to stand forever. And it says, blessed is the nation which God is the Lord. Amen. He who is chosen is his inheritance. God has a good purpose for government. Jesus is going to come back and reign over government. Right. It's going to be perfect one day. Uh, we're never going to have perfect government in this world. Hopefully we can have good government. We strive to have good government. And that means we need to acknowledge God. And that's what we need. We need Christians to stand up and be involved. And so I encourage us as Christians, we need to stand up for the truth. Uh, we know we're not going to change everybody and change everything. The only gospel changes the heart. But there is a place for government to restrain evil, yes. right. protect our children. You know, children will be killed today. Children will be abused. Yes. To, that's the purpose of the law. It's the purpose of us, to, for us, to protect us, life, liberty, and property. So we need to stand up for that. That's God's good plan. And uh, may God help us uh, to do that. All right. Let me just get my bearings of where we're at. Okay. Two more songs and then I'll... <clears throat> Sorrow in my heart, for Jesus is mine. 
keep our trust on Jesus. When the storms come, we go, Lord, why? Why is this happening? What are you, what are you doing? We just have to say like Job, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. And that will be our strength. We keep our, 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 our hearts on Jesus, and he can help us walk through whatever storm comes our way. That was a blessing to me these last couple of weeks when I connected those dots. And maybe somebody here tonight needs to hear that. We have a Savior who will walk on the water. Amen. <clears throat> Also, I'm sure that you're very proud of your kids here and how they're walking with the Lord. 
And I've also got a son who I'm very proud of, Matthew, who's going to come at this time. This, our church supported him as he went on a mission trip recently to Thailand. Matthew is located up in Springfield, Missouri, and he's with a very mission-minded church up there. And they do a lot of mission activities. He was able to get involved with this. So Matthew, you come and you can detail this and I'll try to get your pictures going <laughs> up here at the same time. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, like you said, I am, my name is Matthew and I am the son of Brother Mike and Miss Leisha. And um, so this past fall, I got to go on a mission trip out to um, the Isan region of Thailand, which is kind of on the uh, northeast side. They, um, it was a city called Yasatan, which is about the size of Texarkana. And um, we have a few uh, global mission partners there um, from our church. Um, that are based in Springfield, but they've been serving out in Thailand for, I would say, about two or three years. And um, uh, this was my first time going out to um, the um, overseas on a mission trip, so I didn't really know what to expect, but I just knew that um, whatever happened, um, God would show up. <laughs> and, just different ways. Amen. Um, I guess um, some of the things that we got to experience besides the initial culture shock of people driving on the opposite side of the road <laughs> or um, all the scooters we saw uh, holding multiple people at once <laughs> um, with the uh, just the um, friendly atmosphere of the um, different people that we met. Uh, they uh, were very hospitable and were just really thankful and glad to see us. And just to um, know that we, um, there are people from overseas that generally care, genuinely care about them and their growth and their faith. Um, some of the things that we did while we were over there, uh, they had a uh, sewing ministry that we, um, were able to help out with, not the sewing part, but with uh, <laughs> um, just helping box up um, these ornaments that uh, were hand stitched by some of the ladies there that they kind of do a discipleship group with. Um, they um, meet about every, I think every Thursday. But uh, yeah, and we got to also help with an eyeglass repair uh, ministry, which uh, basically sets up appointments with different people, um, mostly follow-ups, where they just go door, door to door and um, repair, uh, do just different evaluations and repair uh, eyeglasses if need be, that they, and uh, use that as a witnessing opportunity. And uh, I got to see um, firsthand uh, one of those uh, gospel conversations. And um, while no profession of faith was made, um, it was cool to see that there was um, interest there and just in general wanted people wanting to know more about uh, Jesus. And we also got to participate in a uh, one day BBS while we were there. And so, you know how they have like the different rotations, like crafts, um, games, stuff like that. We each got to lead one. Mine was actually um, teaching kids English words. So um, kind of based off of the David and Goliath story, we got to, I got to uh, just pick a few words like rock, sword, sling, and just kind of repeat uh, different words um, to them. <clears throat> And uh, I think they did pretty well for the most part. <laughs> um, some words were easier than others. And um, also, we each got to share our testimonies while we were there. And uh, it was really cool because we actually got to speak it in their own native language. Um, and uh, yeah, I think there was a good response from that as well. And 
I was really proud of our team. Yeah. And some of the profound impacts that I've, um, I guess I've had since I was over there was just the amount of prayer that was done before each opportunity, um, each day that we had, we were over there. Um, we prayed for each person that we were about to meet, uh, each situation that there was, and we got to pray uh, with people. I know that there was one lady that um, had lost her mother, and we kind of got to go to um, kind of like their funeral celebration at her home, which is a lot different than how it would be in American culture. Um, and just kind of show that even though uh, things were, um, may seem dark and kind of hard for her that Jesus would, was the um, God of comfort and was the true one that can give her peace during this time. And um, also, I don't know if uh, one of the pictures was already up, but uh, it was um, really encouraging to see um, at the church service that we went to um, just different people who had made professions of faith and were willing to follow the Lord's example in baptism. Amen. And also, um, just um, the people there in general who have just decided to uh, uh, follow the Lord's uh, leading and uh, uh, were willing to sacrifice um, a lot because um, the main religion over there is Buddhism and it has a very dark hold over the lives over there because a lot of it is based on rituals and um, what you can do in order to obtain uh, peace with God and we know that that's not possible it's only it can be found in a relationship with Christ Amen. Yeah. and um, yeah so uh, if I could um, sum up or just leave a couple of verses in encouragement it would be uh, Matthew 9 verses 37 and 38 which says the harvest is plentiful but the laborers are few therefore pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest um, I would just ask that y'all would just um, pray that um, many, uh, both in the Isan region and um, throughout the world, would just come to know um, Christ as Lord and Savior, and um, also be praying for just how God would use you and give you opportunities to be a light among your friends and neighbors. Amen. Amen. So I just thank y'all for your financial support and for definitely for your prayers. Amen. <laughs> Sharing that it's always good to hear how the Lord is working in other people's lives. We're gonna start back. We're gonna do a couple songs just with the instruments. Um, this first one we're gonna do is "I'll Fly Away." Normally we would have the banjo on it, but of course Jacob <laughs> left it behind. So we won't have that. But uh, we'll, we'll do this one, and then Grace is gonna play a piece on the piano.
looks so easy. <laughs> Trust me, it's not. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
of this world are twisted and evil and in our minds we cannot find right or wrong anymore we spit to recycle keep our highways clear we're concerned about things like the earth's atmosphere some even cry because the whale may not always be here But we're killing our children It's time to cry for the children For their blood flows like a river In the name of women's rights But God knows each heartbeat He knows when every birth of our children. Eyes that never saw mother now gaze on the Savior. Cries never made are now cries of praise to the Lamb they adore. children we daily destroy and we're killing our children it's time to cry for the children for their blood flows like a river in the name of women's rights but God knows each heartbeat he knows whenever we birth America, please get back on your knees for the sake of our children. America, please get back on your knees for the sake of our children. says where our sin abounded, grace abounded much more. God can forgive all of our sins. He can forgive any sins. 
He's forgiven us so much. God can forgive theft. God can forgive lying. God can forgive murder. God, there's grace there in this sin of our nation. Many women are finding that grace and forgiveness. How great is the grace and mercy of God? His long suffering is so, so great for us. And all of that is going to save us. His mercy is going to save us and uh, give us what we don't deserve is living with him forever in a perfect land. And Isaiah the prophet called it Beulah, land, which means married. It's no longer be a separation. We deserve it. God has cleansed our sin, made us holy, and we can live with him. Yeah. Uh -huh. Thank you. 
us. We enjoy singing together and uh, hope they have been a blessing to you tonight. We have one last song that is kind of a, we will sing it a lot together at home and we close out. Sometimes we'll just sing to, when we pray together or we close our church services and uh, we really enjoy singing it. It's such a powerful message. We call it the doxology. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. And it be a great way to close out our time. so much for that. Hope that you'll get a chance to come by and tell them how much you appreciate them for coming. And there's something special about seeing a family singing yeah, like right. that. Yeah, right. Just see here that testimony also of the family, that they're united in worshiping God. I appreciate you coming out and being a part of this. Get by and say something to them tonight. We will be taking an offering back here if you want to say thank you in that special way here. There's an offering at the door here when you're going out. And make sure that before you leave tonight, you ask Matthew to give the gospel in that uh, Taiwan language that he was speaking. Cindy can still do that too, okay? All right. Well, let's all stand. We're going to have a word of prayer. Just praise God here for what we've experienced tonight. And go out with that energy, going out and be witnesses for him all during the week. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we just thank you for your honor and glory, for sending your son, for filling us with your spirit, and for leading us step by step every day. We just pray that you just walk with us, that you would guide us. Dear Lord, that you would just supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. For it's in Christ's heavenly name I pray. Amen. 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 We are dismissed.